I can tell you my model, I can see it. But for this, part of the issue with deep learning is that sometimes we don't know what features it's learned. It gives us tremendous power. But sometimes people like, I might just want something simpler. Like it's so difficult to know what each neuron has learned. And that's why people have come up with these techniques to try to figure out and visualize. And we'll watch a little bit of this. This is my research paper where people have tried to visualize what does each neuron do? We don't quite know, but people are coming up with ways to figure out what has each neuron learned. Like I showed you guys yesterday how people poke the electrode in the cat's brain to figure out which neurons recognize X's, right? Similarly, they're trying computational approaches. I've enabled computers to better see and understand the world. So I want to tell you guys that you'll see a grid here. This is really just one layer. You know how a layer is like all these vertical neurons? This is, think of this as a vertical layer of neurons, but if there, there's so many that they wouldn't be able to fit it all onto the screen. So it's really supposed to be vertical, but they just put it like a grid so that you can see everything. It's really supposed to be a vertical grid. So each of these is like a layer of neurons and it would have been stacked like super long, like super vertically, but it's just like we can't visualize it. So to use the space optimally, they just put it like a grid, but this is one layer. And in reality, the neurons are like stacked. Okay, guys, does that make sense? So, that the, so when you see these, these are, this is one layer. Because I would be confused too, but it's just like a vertical layer of neurons. Vertical, but it's just too tall. So they just stacked it like this, you know. They can recognize school buses and zebras and can tell the difference between Maltese Terriers and Yorkshire Terriers. We now know what it takes to train these neural networks well, but we don't know so much about how they're actually computing their final answers. We developed this interactive deep visualization neural networks well, but we don't know so much about how they're actually computing their final answers. We developed this interactive deep visualization box to shine light into these black boxes, showing what happens inside of neural nets. In the top left corner, we show the input can to the network, which can be a still image or video from a webcam. Yes. Black squares in the middle show the activations on a single layer of a network, in this case the popular deep neural network called AlexNet running in so, cafe. Okay, his audio is not By interacting with the network, we can see what some of the neurons are doing. For example, on this first layer, the unit in the center responds strongly to light to dark edges. Its neighbor, one neuron over, responds to edges in the opposite direction, dark to light. And this is people who come up with the technology. Using optimization, we can synthetically so we can produce images that, that light up each neuron on this layer to see what each neuron is I know the audio isn't working. We can scroll what through what every layer in the network to see what it does, including convolution, pooling, and normalization layers. So which neurons are being We can switch back and forth between showing the actual activations and showing images synthesized to produce high activation. 
By the time we get to the fifth convolutional the layer, the fifth the features layer, being computed features represent being abstract, computed concepts. Represent abstract concepts. For example, so example this, this neuron seems, seems to respond to faces. To faces. We, can we can further investigate this neuron by showing a few different types of information. First, we can artificially create so optimized images using new regularization techniques that are described devices. in our paper. These synthetic images show that this neuron fires in response to a face and shoulders. We can also plot the images from the training set that activate this neuron the most, as well as pixels from those images most responsible for the high activation. So that's like the million dollar question. So you can see that they're trying to figure out like, you know, for cat see faces. This, like, which neurons are activated. Printed text, last layer. So, so this is just... These are some backup slides here. So I want to ask you guys, so in the neural network, so this is the input. These are the beginning to the end. So remember like hidden layer one, hidden layer two, right? Remember those hidden layers? So what do you guys notice about the low level feature? So this is like hidden, this input image, hidden layer one, hidden layer two, and this is the output. So what do you guys, and remember, this is all like one hidden layer. It's supposed to be like stacked, but you know, to save space, they just put it as a grid. So what do you guys notice about low level features? Uh, the low level features are really just uh, simplified versions of the complex, more uh, deeper hidden layers. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. In deep learning, we don't need to care about the features or not. You know, we just give the network a photo and it will predict if it's a car or not. So feature extraction and classification is done within the model itself. So this is great because as a novice, you know, you don't have to spend years trying to figure out or extract features to look out for, you know, perfect. That's awesome. Right? So. Do we know what kind of features the deep neural network is actually looking for? No, uh, not really. That's what people are trying to solve. And they've come up with, um, you know, some techniques. So somebody said that the low level looks more zoomed in compared to the others. Yeah. Uh, what else do you notice about the lower level neurons? Uh, they're very zoomed in and blurry. Yeah, and, and what do you guys notice, thank you, about the higher level features? They're much clearer. Yeah, like I think this looks like a little duck. So the analogy that I want you guys to take from this is like, think of it this way. You got, do you guys know what a palette is? No. Okay. Um... Think of it like I'm an artist, okay? Like, so I'm an artist and back in the day, again, I'm making some beautiful paintings. I'm just going to need the basics. Can you see how you can mix them up together to get the colors that you want? So, the, so that idea is very much like this. Yeah, palette has def many different um, ideas. So I can have like, I can have um, this color, red, do anybody know the primary colors we can use? There's yellow. And then, yeah, awesome. Thank you, Jaxi. And then blue. So imagine that the low level features are just the basics. Okay, guys, these are the basics. And maybe I can probably also add in maybe white and black as well. and that I could also add in black. So the idea is that the low levels are just the basics, the basic ideas. And then what happens when you go to the more advanced is you're gonna see, okay, well, red and yellow, what, what color do red and yellow make? Orange. Orange, yes, I can get the more advanced colors. Oh gosh, I can get the more advanced colors like orange from this. I can get red and yellow give us orange. And then what do yellow and blue give us? Green. green. Yeah, I can get green from, from these two. And then um, let me also draw it here. I can get green from here. And then what? how can I get like, um, 
purple. Does anybody know how to get purple? Red and blue. Yeah, thank you. And I can also get like, you know, pink from red and white. You know, I can get all those. Thank you guys. I can get all those colors by mixing them together. I can also do red and white and I can get pink. So it's like you can blend to get the more advanced colors that you need. That's like, it's, it's sort of like that idea that you start off here with these basic, basic, you know, edges, you know, that they're these, like, these are the edges here. So as I mentioned before, we don't know what's going on in a neural network, but we can sort of get an idea, right? So the first few layers try to take care of some of the lower level features, you know, lines, edges, what we see. And then these middle level features try to combine these simple lines, like how we try to combine these colors. They try to combine them to create more complex shapes like curves over here. And then, you know, uh, it could be like a circle. Then, then these higher level features get more abstract, like, you know, the, a wheel of a car, you know, these circles or a beak. They're trying to learn some things from it and they get activated accordingly. So that's what happens. And the pixels are trying to recognize patterns along the pixels. So it's almost like in a palette. So think of it like here in a palette when you're editing colors, think of it like a continuum of all these different colors. You can get all these colors, any colors that you want by playing around with these colors. Does that make sense to you guys? It's, it's kind of like that. You can get the more advanced colors from the basics. You need the basics down, then you can get all sorts of beautiful colors for mixing them together in the palette. So that's what I like to think about. So in the same way, deep learning uses hierarchical composed features. So if you think of this raw data as being pixels of this person here, you know, you have these pixels and if we can represent these pixels in terms of we can make this image black and white, and then we can trans get the pixel values, you know, between zero and 255, we can get the number of pixels, make it into a little matrix, row by column matrix. Remember guys, we can get from an image, we can turn this image into a set of pixels. Remember here, pick a set of pixels from an image. We can do that here and then make those into neurons. So like what we can do here is we can use these hierarchical composed features, go from raw data to these edges, edges here along. Then these edges, we can edges form face parts, combination of edges, and then ultimately face detectors. You see like noses and all that, these can form face detectors. So we are going from pixels, so we can identify face parts, you know, eyes, nose, that's what these neurons, so these are all neurons and layers, they're recognizing these different parts. And that's the part that gives you goosebumps that for that AI protein folding, some neurons have probably recognized fundamental tools in biology. Isn't that pretty amazing? Except that we don't know, they probably learn some rules. Like, you know, that you guys, your, your ki kids, grandkids, you know, depending if you have them or so, but next generation could be learning these rules. Isn't that pretty amazing? I, I think it's really cool. It learns something about biology. It gives me goosebumps that we're gonna try to figure out. We have to now go back in that neural network and biologists are gonna probably wanna figure out what the neural network has done, how it can, can come to these predictions so that they can, figure out those rules and then write it in your guys' textbooks and so on, right? There might even be a quiz itself on the 3D modeling of proteins that will, that will open up now, right? Because of this discovery that they, you know, so it's similarly reusable representation. Maybe we could have solved that problem with structural biology, but it might've taken us another 50, 60 years. You know, it's all possible with time, but you can speed it up. And the idea is you can similarly learn how to drive. You can teach a car how to drive as well. It's all data, which is what we'll talk about now. And the idea is once you have neurons that have recognized, have you guys heard the saying, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, you know, pun intended. 
the idea is that you can train neurons to recognize, and as you go along, neurons get more and more specific, right? The colors that we can get get more and more colorful. So similarly, if you have these neurons that can recognize these curves, you can utilize it in cases where maybe you're looking at bicycle wheels or, or bike wheels, you know, or a wheel of a, of, a, um, of a watch or a basketball hoop or a basketball objects with rounder shapes. So you can use these neurons that are trained to recognize round shapes. You can use them again. You can reuse those neurons. So we're going to continue with the next lecture. So we're a bit behind, but I want you guys to sort of take away the idea here. Do you guys understand like these concepts? Do you guys want to take a quick two minute break again and come back at 70, 29? Central time, my time. And I could take questions in the meantime, but we talked about how neural networks are just functions. Input can be a picture, output can just be numbers. We can use forward propagation for calculations and backward propagation to update weights. If you guys want to get up and stretch then um, and come back in like uh, three minutes, then that would be great. 